Good afternoon friends. In the hour long session today we will be discussing connectors in the English language. The new diploma syllabus has English as one of the subjects and it has chapter 7 in grammar on connectors. Connectors in English as in any other language in most of the languages form an important part of the language. In the chapter that we have on grammar we have about 37 connectors and this session would complement the previous discussion on connectors. In this session we will be discussing 9 of those connectors they are therefore, so, who, whom, whose, which these are 4 relative pronouns and 3 relative adverbs where, when and why. So these 9 connectors will be discussed in detail today. Why connectors? That is the first question that we might have. In fact, connectors are needed in any transaction as such. But in language, connectors link ideas, actions and these ideas and actions are expressed through phrases, clauses and sentences. So when we connect phrases, clauses, words, adverbs or verbs, they actually show and they actually lend cohesion to our discourse in written or in spoken language. Connectors also coordinate the clauses. So in other words, you can say that connectors are the signposts that guide the listeners and sometimes even the speaker. So just by seeing the signpost, we can see where we are going. Connectors perform the same role in the language. So connectors are important in a, any language. Let us look, uh, look at the types of connectors in brief. The, we can roughly categorize these connectors in three types. The first is coordinating conjunctions. They join pairs of nouns, adjectives, adverbs, verbs, phrases or independent clauses. Uh, you would also remember that clauses are, uh, clauses are made of a subject and a verb at least. So clauses are made of subject and verb. Some of the common coordinating conjunctions you would remember from your previous classes would be and, but, or, both and, either or, among others. So this is the first type, coordinating conjunctions. Second type is adverbs or conjunctions. Sometimes they are also known as conjuncts. They mainly join clauses and sentences. Unlike the previous, the first type, coordinating conjunctions that connected even the verbs or adverbs. Uh, the second type, adverbs just connect the clauses and sentences. Some of the common uh, uh, words which are used as, as connectors of this second type are so, therefore, however, though, still, yet. Some of these you have already studied and you know how to use them. But as and when needed, we will have references to them. The third type of conjunctions introduce subordinate adverb or noun clauses and so they are called subordinating conjunctions. Some of the common subordinating conjunctions are if, unless, that, when, etc. So these are the three types of connectors. Connectors, I mean what we call connectors is a broad term and that covers all these words which are used as uh, connectors but sometimes these words are also used as adverbs. So this is a broad category connectors and within this category we have seen there are three main types coordinating conjunctions, adverbs conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. So in short uh, this illustration can explain what a conjunction does or what a connector does. You can see that the figure in the middle, the man wearing a cap saying conjunction is holding one sentence in each of his hands and his role in many ways is like connecting these two sentences from either of his sides. 
so conjunction connects to clauses words or to independent sentences sometimes conjunctions uh, are needed to complete this sentence so this illustration very well explains what they do about conjunctions we can also say that conjunctions are based on logical relationships and for relationships and for uh, the logical relationships for understanding conjunctions we must also understand the logical relationships between them among them so some of the common relationships that a sentence or clauses uh, clauses might have uh, are similarity contrast the link of time cause and effect reason and result conditions conditions could be positive or negative addition alternatives when you used in your previous class and you must have seen that and is used for the relationship of similarity similarly but is used for the relationship that expresses contrast similarly yet still these are also contrast expressing connectors in language we can have following relationships relative clauses restrictive clauses cross reference so language and clauses they uh, follow these relationships and therefore uh the first pair that we have is the based on the relationship between reason and result reason and result reason always precedes the result when we use therefore and so in your previous classes you when you use because since as for they also talked about the reason so it is possible to have clauses connected by therefore or so and the same clauses could also be connected by because the difference however is that when you use because the focus it's known as the clause of reason the clause that follows because is the clause of reason and that the reason is in focus while in result here when we use therefore or so the focus is on result and therefore we call it the close of result reason precedes the result so if you look at your book you will see that the equation that you have in your book says that first comes the reason then comes the result for example if i have two sentences we are shortly going to look at some of the examples in the sentences and that will explain more therefore or so are interchangeable that is to say that it is possible to use therefore in the place of so and vice versa however unlike the first type of conjunctions and or but these do not connect words or verbs or adverbs but these are limited to independent clauses so independent clauses usually can stand on their own too so we can look at some of the examples for example here we have two independent clauses i could not meet you i was not in town i could not meet you i was not in town you can see in the bracket that the first clause is the clause of result i could not meet you but that is also an independent statement i could not meet you i can stop after that i could not meet you and that expresses that i am sorry for that but the second independent clause says i was not in town and if i say these two sentences together they both independently can also express the meaning so when we said is it necessary to have the connectors so the answer could be yes it is possible to uh, to do without connectors but when we use connectors our sentences become easy to understand so connectors make sentences easy to understand i could not meet you is the result i was not in town is the reason and if you use the connectors so or therefore you can see i was not in town so i could not meet you i was not in town so i could not meet you now let's try to use because as the connector in the same sentence i could not meet you because i was not in town when you are using so you say i was not in town 
so I could not meet you. Please also note that the first independent clause that you have, I could not meet you, it's an independent sentence almost, I could not meet you, is given first in the sequence, while the cause of reason is uh, given second, I was not in town. But when you connect, you have to adjust the sequence accordingly. For example, if someone connects just by placing so uh, in the middle of the sentence and removes the full stop, that would not be the correct sentence because it would not express the meaning. For example, you cannot say that I could not meet you so I was not in town. That doesn't express the meaning. However, you can do that in because. Because in because, this arrangement is already up to the mark. But yeah, so when you write your answers, you must also be careful about the changes which are required to be done accordingly. There are some other sentences. These are some other sentences. It was raining. I took my umbrella. You may prepare a list of points that you need to go through, a kind of checklist, and try connect these sentences using so or therefore. The first step in your checklist should be to locate the reason and the result. For example, in the first sentence here, it was raining, I took my umbrella. What do you think is the clause of reason that made you take your umbrella? Taking an umbrella with you is the result of something. And the reason for that action is that it was raining. Had it not been raining, you probably wouldn't have taken umbrella with you. So it was raining is the clause of reason. And that should precede the connector. So in this sentence, the arrangement is already appropriate. So you don't need to rearrange or modify the sequence. You can simply use, it was raining, so I took my umbrella. It was raining, therefore I took my umbrella. So here, rearrangement is not needed. Look at the second sentence. I was absent. I was unwell. This is like the first example that we did to explain the use of therefore or so, where the first close is not the close of reason, but it is the close of result. I was absent is the result because I was unwell. That is the reason. So the reason for your absence is not being well. So I was unwell is the reason and that should precede the connector. So here it needs modification, it needs rearrangement of clauses because I was unwell which is the second clause in the given uh, sentences should go first. So you will say I was unwell so I was absent. I was unwell therefore I was absent. It will be a good exercise to use because, since, for, as in the same sentences. In the examination, however, you should be acting as per the instructions given. Sometimes you are asked to use appropriate connectors, in which case you can use either because, or therefore, or so, or since, whatever you think is appropriate. But in case you have specific instruction in the bracket saying use XYZ connector, where a connector is specified, you should be limiting your use only to that connector. So it will be a good exercise to use because for these pairs of sentences too. For example, in the first sentence, you can say, I took my umbrella because it was raining. I was absent because I was unwell. So you can connect the same pairs with because too. Look at the third pair. It's Sunday, I feel a little relaxed. It's Sunday, I feel a little relaxed. You can use so or therefore in this pair, but after locating the close of reason. Remember, reason always comes first in this case, as in life. Reason comes first and then comes the consequences. So what is the reason of your feeling relaxed? And the reason is, it's Sunday. 
So in this sentence, once again, you do not need any rearrangement if you are going to use therefore or so. So you can say it's Sunday, therefore I feel a little relaxed. It's Sunday, so I feel a little relaxed. However, if you are going to use because, you might need to rearrange. Because while you use any of the reasons showing connectors, you need to have the result first. And in that case, you will rearrange the statement. You will say, I feel a little relaxed because it's Sunday. So, rearrangement should be after locating the close of reason and the close of result. So, so and therefore, they are the closes showing the result. So, that's the first set out of the nine connectors that we are going to discuss today. So and therefore form the first set for our today's session. The second set that we have today is made of relative pronouns and informally we also call them WH words. WH words are often used and more commonly used as question makers. We use them as question makers. For example, the relative pronouns that you see on the screen, who, whom, whose, which, we often use them to ask questions. For example, I can ask, who are you? Who am I? Who is he? Who do you want to meet? Similarly, I can form questions with all the other three. Which pen do you use? Whose basket do you have? Whom do you want to meet? So it is possible to frame questions and probably that's what you would remember. However, today we will learn a new use of these relative pronouns called WH words informally. Look at the title relative pronouns and let's understand these, these two words, relative pronouns. You already know what pronouns are and you can also give me, you can also think of some examples of simple pronouns. They are I, we, he, she, it, they. These are the simple pronouns that we use. However, there is a word here that says relative pronouns. Relative pronouns. And why do we call them relative? 